My concern with these trip wires is that, especially with all the snow falling off the trees, there just seems to be a lot of false, false positives, false alarms going on. But I don't see as I have any other choice other than just to reset them. So, can I help you? Still dicking around with cameras? No, I'm actually mildly glad to see her. Oh, good, because the last time I saw you, you said it was a pleasure to work with me. Sounds fine, I suppose. You said pleasure in air quotes. So am I going to have to shoot you and take all your stuff, or are we going to go talk? Let's go with option two, I suppose. This is Monica, and obviously we do know each other. Uh, you know what they always say, uh, when the shit hits the fan, I'm showing up at your house. And we had a little bit of that going on here today. Uh, she was my employer, uh, kind of. I was a freelancer, and I did some video work for her. Well, you work at a grocery store? A it's grocery the store second chain? largest food distribution channel in New England. Okay, yeah, the grocery store. And uh, I had an agreement with her about a certain set price for this project that I was working on, uh, and she felt that that maybe included infinite changes. Well, and oh, There was no stipulation well, I, in I the go contract. By, I go by praxis in these, just uh, for anonymity. Right, so, because you don't want YouTube and the whole internet that doesn't exist anymore. It's just, it's just good housekeeping, so let's just go with praxis for these. Uh, so anyway, I was doing a number of changes over a, a series of six months. My favorite was when I had to change the kerning. around all the letters for every price in the entire uh, video. It was, it was an, a wonderful experience. She's a wonderful boss, and I'm glad that she's here, for real, actually, because now there's finally two of us, and we can do crazy things like sleep occasionally, and we can take shifts and things. So uh, it is nice that you're here. Welcome. Thanks. But it's still a little awkward. Monica's upstairs right now, just getting generally cleaned up. She hasn't been able to bathe or anything for the past week or so, and that's just not good for your skin to let it get sweaty and dirty and everything. So she's trying to clean up, but she does have a really nasty leg infection. Now, I think that if she had had, you know, a grab-and-go bag or anything like that on her with some basic medical supplies, when she had gotten that scrape injury, she could have cleaned it off right away. But she didn't have that, you know, it reminds me of the, the story of the grasshopper and the ant, you know. She was the grasshopper not preparing, and I guess I'm the ant, and uh, she knew where to come to. Uh, I guess I could be resentful about that, you know, like, she wasn't putting the effort in to prepare. I remember, you know, back in the day, you know, people were always talking about like, ah, you know, if people start showing up at my door, I'm going to turn them all away, because, you know, they, they were, you know... All those grasshoppers, and I was the diligent ant from the... You remember the kid's story. The grasshopper and the ant. Grasshopper doesn't want to prepare from winter. The yeah, ant does. Yada, yada. But, uh, you know, at the, at the moment, we're really in a position to help each other out. Because, you know, she needs all the supplies that I've accumulated. And, and I really need another person. So whether or not she's deserving or not, I'm better off with her. So, uh, and I, I, you know, honestly... Just as a human being, you don't want to turn people away. So I'm glad I have a legitimate reason not to turn her away because I I wouldn't want to do that anyway. But I really need her. I need this, another set, set of eyes. You just can't do this by yourself. I mean, I had such a shit at... That's probably why I, I've been overly ridiculous today. I just did not sleep at all last night. And I need I need to have another person here so I, we can take shifts and, and, and do it like that. So, yeah. The other thing that's been popping through my head is just, again, back in the day, people are always, like, you know, going on about, like, how women are going to need men in SHTF or if there was a collapse. You know, just women are, you know, less less physically strong, you know, in general, that, you know, they're going to need men. But, you know, I think today is a really good example of why that's not the case. Firearms just completely level the playing field. You know, even though Monica just had this little <laughs> dinky little cute pistol, it totally could have blown my brains out. And... You know, it's true, in general, men are stronger than women, physically. You know, there's plenty of women that are stronger than me. But it doesn't matter when there's firearms. So, you know, all that stuff about, you know, guys saying, like, women women are going to finally need me when the shit hits the fan. I think that's just them jerking themselves off, because if a chick's got a gun, that's a pretty big fucking bicep. So... Yeah, so anyway, I'm glad that I have her strength now, her eyes now, uh, and it's just, 
it's nice that I have another person here. So I want to keep her alive and not dying from her leg infection. So I came down here to get some medical supplies. I, you know, I never really organized my medical supplies just when stuff was on sale. I grabbed a lot of it, so I'm going to go through it now and see what I got and hope that I stacked enough of it. I wish I had taken this a little bit more seriously, but I've got what I got and I've got a decent stash right here. What I've got going on in here is it's kind of a hodgepodge. I've got some iodine wound spray. I mean, this will be useful for, you know, helping to clean that wound off. So, so that's good. Uh, what else is in here? I've got some uh, uh, little bandages like tape to hold down sterile pads and gauze and stuff like that. I've got a lot of sterile pads, a lot of gauze in here. I've got some hydrogen peroxide in here. I actually got another bottle of it right here. I like hydrogen peroxide. I think this is a really good way of uh, sterilizing a surface of things. Uh, the only problem with hydrogen peroxide is it does have a shelf life. So uh, we'll see if this is still working. Yeah, this one expired just about a year ago, but I've kept it in a cool, dark place. Dark is really important for hydrogen peroxide. That's why they have this uh, dark bottle. It's always sold in a dark bottle because sunlight and light in general, I think, will, will break down hydrogen peroxide and just turn into water. But we'll know pretty quickly whether it works if it starts fizzing when it gets applied. So we'll see about that one. I also have uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol, which is just good for sterilizing things. It hurts, but it's good for sterilizing things. Um, and man, a lot of sterilizing stuff. I got a ton of boxes over here. This is the critical one for today, though. Um, this is uh, this is all my antibiotics, and uh, I'd, I'd had a leg infection like um, like Monica's a while ago, and I used doxycycline. I actually use this doxycycline. This is aquarium fish antibiotics, but. They work for me, and, uh, you know, you can buy them without a prescription and everything. So I've stocked a lot of this stuff up, uh, and I was always really careful about it. I didn't, you know, get a cold and start using it, because that's stupid, and it, you know, it helps to uh, create antibiotic resistance in bacteria. So it's a bad idea for so many reasons, but right now I'm really glad I have this stuff, because there's no doctors to go to. And life before antibiotics really sucked. I None of us want to go back to that. And I'm glad that I've got all this stuff. I've got doxycycline penicillin, amoxicillin. Like I said, I've tried this stuff out. It works just fine. And the expiration dates on these, some of them are getting close to or have passed expiration dates, but there have been a lot of studies, uh, many conducted by uh, the U.S. military, and this stuff lasts way past expiration date as long as it's stored properly. So, oh my god, I'm glad I have this stuff. You know, for Monica now, keep her alive, healthy, and able to help out around here. And if I ever need this stuff, I'm really glad that I've got it because life before antibiotics sucked. It totally sucked. So I'm glad I stacked all this stuff. So I'm going to bring it up and get Monica fixed up. I feel like I should mention in addition to all of the medicines and tools and things like that that I have, the gauzes, sterile pads and everything, uh, I also have always kept a very extensive library of paper books and I have a, a lot of medical books in there which right now I'm really happy for because I don't have a lot of that knowledge in my head at the moment. Uh, this is a great one, Where There Is No Doctor. This is about medicine, practicing medicine in kind of like a, a third world environment without much infrastructure, if any, kind of a collapse environment. Sound familiar? Uh, so this might be pretty useful. It's got a lot of, I've, I've flipped through this one before, it's got a lot of really gruesome images of death and disease, which I guess is kind of applicable because that's what it's all about. Sort of horrifying, but uh, it's nice to have it. Would a, a trained medical professional be preferable to a book? Absolutely, but where the hell are they right now? I don't have that. So at least I've got this, something to turn to if I feel lost and want to have some idea what to do. This is another great one, I think, uh, to have right now. It's, it's called The Pill Book, and it's just a bunch of reference information on all sorts of different pills. Now, I've stacked a lot of pills myself, and I, I know what those are for, but... Now with Monica here, I might be able to actually explore a little bit. Now I'm not going to go like busting into people's houses where there's people there or anything. That would be rude and inconsiderate. Um, <coughs> uh, but if I find an empty house or something, I might come across pills. I may not know what they're for, but they might be super useful and I could find out what I might use them for in this pill book at some point. Or I might find out that it's completely useless and of no value to me whatsoever, but could be useful as trade, and if I could tell people what they're for, then uh, then that, there would be use to that. And in addition to that, I just have a general, like, simple first aid book. You know, even if you're not going to get into where there is no doctor and all that kind of crazy stuff, just general first aid is something good to know. Now, this one would probably be a good one for me to kind of have read ahead of time, you know, but 
kind of busy now, but it, well, that's weird. What, it, what is it? The Kama Sutra of first aid books? What the hell is going on in that picture? I don't know. I should probably flip through this thing at some point. But it's got lots of information, you know, spider bites and burns, all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's really important not just to stack stuff, you know, stethoscopes, gauze pads, you know, different medicines. If you don't know what to do with those things, you know, you're going to end up creating like a stethoscope su suppository. That's not really what a stethoscope's for. So, you know, inserting it anally is not going to get you any results. So you need to have the information of what to do with your tools as well. And while I don't have a lot of the information up here, at least I've got it in paper form here. And I should probably get upstairs and help Monica actually solve her problem so that she doesn't die of a leg infection. So I've got some uh, this uh, doxycycline, which I actually used on my leg once, which worked really well. So uh, we've got these, you know, they're fish antibiotics, but, you know, they work for people. So I've got, got that for you. Thanks. Do we have to film this right now? Oh, well, you know, just, just in case. Just, just in case. It's just my thing. The internet comes back. Okay. Yeah. How's it going? Um, it's pretty rough. Uh, it's bruised and there's a lot of scrapes. The cut is really bad and I didn't clean it properly. Well, it is infected, I guess. Yeah. 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 Okay, so why did you come here? <clears throat> Well, I, I, it's not like I'm right next door. It must you must have had to walk a bit. Yeah. Well, the last time I saw you, you were taking all this food out of our store because. Okay. Well, I bought that food actually. I paid for all of that at an awesome employee discount. That yes, they, and they it extended was all non-perishable. So yeah, you a... know, I put two and two together. Well, it's worked out, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I um I was heading to the store myself and. Uh, there was a, a large group of looters there, um, so I, I couldn't go and get any food for myself and remembered that someone conveniently ripped us off. And so... Um, Again, I totally paid yes, for all that food. Yes, yes, but it hurt our margin. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Past is in the past. Um, I found your address on the W-9 that I had on file for you, and um, I started heading this way. Places to get food, and fortunately, I stole from a car. I was near the power lines a couple of miles away from here, and these in the sky, uh, these turd burglars are just flying at me so fast, and I freaked out and ran as fast as I could. And this is, of course, when I got this wonderful cut and scrapes here. And I just stayed in the woods primarily the rest of the time. Uh, the cover was pretty good, and then. Um, a little bit closer, maybe um, two miles or so from here, there was uh, a bunch of different bands of people. Um, you know, they all had guns. It was pretty scary. Yeah, actually, um, I ran into one of those myself. He did not impress me with his intelligence, actually. The, the only reason I'm still alive is because he was a major moron and was just sort of... Okay, these people are organized and they're coming. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.